on re the retributive argument. But I have to watch my time. But here is where I would like to have Vicki come in to speak. Because she's the person who can talk about this, but she's not here. So I'm going to make a few more points, and then we're going to show a clip on her. The retributive argument sees the focus and the core of punishment as a matter of justice, just retribution, just retaliation for wrongs done, in response to heinous crimes. We feel righteous anger. We have a desire for just retribution or retaliatory payback for the crimes that have been done and against the criminal. And we want it for the victims, but we also want it for law-abiding members of society. We desire to rectify, to right the wrongful act done, and to retaliate against the wrongdoer. We punish offenders simply because it's the right thing to do. Justice demands that we render to each person what he or she deserves. And the guiding principle with such a judgment is called lex talionis, the right of retaliation. The victim has this right to retaliate, right? And the state represents them in exercising this right. Consistent with this reasoning, we theoret theoretically reserve capital punishment for the worst of the worst, who commit the most heinous, aggravated acts of murder. And the reasoning is that no punishment would equal the crime of a heinous, aggravated murder except execution. So justice requires execution. But this position raises a whole range of moral concerns. And in a course, you could explore this. I mean, I have a 14-week course on the death penalty. So I'm just going to throw out some of these concerns. There are concerns about the logic of retributive reasoning. Some argue two wrongs do not make a right. To rectify the wrong done by someone to another does not mean it is right for us to do the same exact retaliatory act to them, homicide for homicide. But a retributive would respond, well, we're not doing the same thing. They killed an innocent person, we're killing a guilty person, so it's not the same act. There's problems with the motive of retaliation. Is it a primitive rather than an honorable impulse? Is it a matter of just retribution or is it really retaliatory revenge rooted in anger or rage? Because you killed, we will kill in return and then we will satisfy this vengeful retaliative desire that we have. And if we're honest, we all have this impulse. When someone cuts us off on the road, when someone annoys us in a restaurant, there is this desire. The question is, is it a negative desire for revenge that should be avoided? Or is it an honorable one of retribution and righteous anger that should be encouraged? A major concern is that strict adherence to the principle of lex talionis, or just retribution, puts the criminal in the position of dictating our behavior. They're in control. They're going to force the state to do back to them what was done. You must retaliate against me in kind. So it puts the criminal in charge. And this is troubling. There's also concerns about what we become through such a punishment. Do some acts of strict retaliation debase us in the process. We seek just punishment, but are there kinds of punishment that debase us in doing them? So do we deserve to kill? It may be just retaliation to rape a rapist or to torture a torturer, yet we refuse to do these acts for moral reasons. They may deserve that kind of retaliation, but we refuse to retaliate in kind. It seems according to the reasoning of just retribution, there's a range of punishment. If it's too low, if it's insufficient, it's unfair to the victim. If it's too much, it's excessive, and it's unfair to the perpetrator of the crime. Lex talionis, 
requires punishment equal to the crime. And that's the upper limit. You can't go any beyond that or it would be excessive. And if you give that, that's a strict retributivism. You give back exactly what was done. But are we required to punish in kind if our standards of decency call into question certain kinds of punishment? Some argue that the state does not do an injustice if it punishes as close to lex talionis as far as is morally permissible so that you can fall short of strict retribution because we judge the strict retributive punishment to cross a moral boundary. And we refuse to cross that. That's the boundary that the criminal crossed, and we refuse to cross it. This ends up making a very clear statement. You deserve to have done to you what you did to the victim. But we will punish you to a lesser extent because of our moral scruples, which prevent us from doing the kind of act you did. So just as we refuse to rape rapists and torture torturers, we may justifiably refuse to murder in order to show that murdering is wrong. So we should punish justly, but without crossing the same moral line that the killer was willing to cross. Early in American history, Benjamin Rush expressed concern that responding to a violent and tragic crime with violence and with tragic punishment will have a brutalizing effect on a society. There are other concerns, and I'll just mention a few more and then I'm close to the end. There are concerns about reductionism, and this is one that concerns me. I have been visiting a man on death row for 12 years, and in fact, if Maryland does not repeal, he is the next person to be executed. And this is my, one of my major concerns. In punishing, are we reducing a person to their worst act? So we're making them singling irreducibly equal to that worst act. Imagine your worst act. Is it right to reduce you to that singular act? Or is there much greater complexity to you? You are more than your worst act. To do so, is that a moral response to a person? Also, as we've seen, there's concerns about the fallibility of human judgment, judgment in inflicting irreversible fatal punishment. Marquis de Lafayette said it very simply. He said, I will stand opposed to execution until someone can prove to me the infallibility of human judgment. So the problem is the finality of the death penalty. There is no way of correcting a wrong judgment and a punishment. And this concern lingers and lingers and troubles us. As already discussed, there are grave concerns about the fairness of application of such retributive justice. Sh studies show that death sentences depend on a wide range of factors beyond the kind of crime. As I mentioned, race, money, geography, quality of counsel, jurors, uh, prosecutorial discretion. So it is not the case in this country that the worst of the worst get the death penalty, right? as just retribution would demand. It is surprising and unsettling to people who defend the death penalty on retributive grounds when they hear of the escalating opposition of murder victim family members who don't support executions. This throws them, because those are the people that you would expect to passionately want executions in terms of just retribution. Not all family members want execution, and increasingly, numbers oppose it, and they actively oppose it. They have become abolitionists because of their opposition. They do not want the, case, the state killing in their name to express the injustice of killing. 